week on One Devotion. A Euroleague veteran builds his family's basketball legacy by helping others. A former world champion becomes the Euroleague's all-time rebounding king. Four stars who made a splash in a viral video recalled their acting debuts. And the moments to remember from another week of Euroleague thrills. Building a basketball legacy is often considered a matter of collecting accolades on the court. But at least one Euroleague star, Sinan Guler of Galatasaray Liv Hospital Istanbul, is building an off-court legacy that celebrates much more than his own accomplishments. Guler legacy, his four-year-old camp for children, uses the basketball experiences of his entire family to enrich the lives of young people in Istanbul and beyond. In those camps, we also bring kids from less fortunate areas of Turkey uh, without any expense on their side to Istanbul, to the basketball camps and teach them basketball. And we try to share our experiences through basketball and life with them. Guler's family has plenty experience to share too. Father Nikati is an ex-pro, coach and basketball executive. Older brother Murat Khan played four Euroleague seasons himself. While Sinan helped achieve Turkey's biggest basketball moment, winning a silver medal at the 2010 World Championships. All three run the camps, but while his sons continue playing professionally, the patriarch takes the lead role. He oversees a lot of things. He's um, sharing his experiences with the players and with the coaches, and he's sharing his um, attributes that he gained throughout the years of coaching and working in Federation to create a better environment on and off the court for the kids. Sinan's inspiration to start Guler Legacy was his own boyhood opportunities to attend camp, including a couple at which he met Michael Jordan. I had a chance to see him, talk to him a little, even for a little bit, and it was an experience that stayed with me for throughout my youth, and I wanted to share that experience with the players that are up and coming in the youth programs right now in Turkey uh, in any way possible. That inspiration has expanded to using basketball and his family's broad experience in the sport to bridge gaps between people. The main thing is I, I believe basketball has a universal language. Uh, there's no translation needed. All you need is a basket and a ball, basically. Once the camp begins, Sinan and Murakan do not limit themselves to teaching basketball skills. We stay at the camp together with the kids. Um, sometimes we play basketball with them, sometimes we talk with them outside of the court, hearing about their experiences and what they go through in life, and we do the same thing to them so they can learn from us. What Sinan himself has learned through Guler legacy is that the transformational power of basketball works at any level of society. From the first year, seeing a kid from Istanbul with, you know, some fancy shoes that he can wear and he can buy easily through his chances, and less fortunate kids from, you know, different cities of Turkey on the southeast part of it, Getting on the court together and playing the same game, seeing the same love and passion of the game in their eyes, and just doing basically the same thing, maybe in different levels, but doing the same thing and learning the same thing. It's an amazing experience just to see that and to create an opportunity for kids to be in that situation.
fans may prefer scoring, but players and coaches know that great rebounding is a hallmark of winning basketball. As of this week, the Turkish Airlines Euroleague has a new all-time king of the backboards, Felipe Reyes of Real Madrid, who pulled his record-breaking 1,288th rebound on Thursday. Having followed in the footsteps of older brother Alfonso, Reyes may have seen destined to rebounding greatness, but never did he think of Sunday becoming the very best in the business. No, para nada. Nunca soñé con con llegar a, a conseguir pues, eh, cosas tan importantes como por ejemplo esta. Eh, yo cuando era pequeño pues solo quería di eh, divertirme, hacerlo lo mejor posible, pero en ningún momento soñé con con llegar a batir un récord eh, histórico en, en la Euroliga. Una competición que te vuelvo a repetir es pues, eh, muy, muy importante. Reyes needed 215 games to set the record, 12 with his first club Estudiantes and the remainder with Real Madrid, where he has played since 2004. The 34-year-old is extremely proud of his achievement and now he's aiming to add even more rebounds to his tally so that he can never be beaten. Para mí muchísima importancia tiene ser el mejor en la historia de una competición tan fuerte como es la Euroliga eh, es, es algo que, con lo que nunca había soñado ¿no? y sobre todo en el rebote que es una faceta del juego que, que siempre me ha caracterizado y que desde pequeño he trabajado muchísimo. Eh, muy orgulloso y ahora pues a intentar seguir aumentando esa diferencia para que no me pille el siguiente. Reyes derives particular pleasure from having surpassed a player he greatly admires, former Seska Moscow, Montepaski Siena and Fenerbahce Ulker star Mirsad Turchan, who reached 1,287 rebounds before retiring in 2012. Por supuesto que, que superar a un jugador como, como es Mirsad Turchan eh, en el rebote, una, una especialidad que, que él se le daba también. Y, y que tenía tanta facilidad para coger rebotes, pues superarle para mí eh, es, es, un, es un logro, ¿no? Y estoy muy, muy feliz de, de haberlo conseguido y de haberle superado. ¿eh? Standing at just two meters four, Reyes is among the Euroleague's smaller centers. Evidence that there are more important things than size when it comes to developing an ability for rebounding. Un poco de todo, ¿no? sobre todo el instinto, saber colocarte, saber dónde va a ir el rebote, ganar bien la posición. Eh, para mí eso, las ganas, para mí eso lo, es lo más importante. Luego está claro que, que también pues, el físico es importante y, y otros aspectos, pero, pero yo eh, no soy un, un pivot muy alto, he conseguido pues, eh, batir este récord gracias a, a las ganas y a la colocación. And if the rebounder's art may seem like an individual one, based on a mix of grit and guile, Reyes is quick to credit the coaches and teammates who have helped him become better at it season by season since he joined the club. Desde que llegué aquí al Real Madrid, eh, pues no he parado de crecer en ese aspecto porque he tenido entrenadores que me han ayudado mucho a, a trabajar después de cada entrenamiento, a mejorar mi tiro y. Y bueno, desde aquí estoy muy, agra muy agradecido, ¿no? Si no llega a ser por ellos, a lo mejor pues no, no podría haber mejorado todo lo que he mejorado y no, no habría conseguido todo lo que he conseguido. Let's see what happened in the matches this week. Maccabi won a rematch of last season's championship game in another exciting contest with Real Madrid. Powerhouses FC Barcelona and Panathinaikos triumphed at home and Cervenas Vedsta secured its first ever victory in this phase of the competition. In a repeat of last May's final, Maccabi Electra and Real Madrid produced a thrilling encounter in Tel Aviv. The visitors raced out to an early lead behind Felipe Reyes on the night that he became the Euroleague's all-time leading rebounder. But Maccabi rallied to lead through nine assists from Jeremy Pargo and 17 points apiece from Marquez Haynes and Sophocles Korzanitis, and held on to win 90-86.
following a pre-game ceremony to honour former Barcelona and Xalgiris Kaunas great Sarunas Yajikavicius, the Spanish team took immediate control as weekly MVP Ante Tomic stamped his authority on proceedings. Bastian Nachbar contributed 15 points and Barcelona won comfortably. Another home team benefiting from a fast start was Panathinaikos Athens, which had Yanis Blums leading six scorers in double figures with 16 points. Demarcus Nelson and Dimitris Diamantidis combined for 14 assists as the host cruised past Galatasaray despite a late rally from the Turkish team. Servena Zvezda claimed its first ever top 16 victory in convincing fashion in Belgrade, riding on 10 assists from Marcus Williams and Baba Marjanovic's eighth double double of the season to comfortably defeat Alba Berlin. Real Madrid is joined at the top of the standings by reigning champs Maccabi, with the familiar figures of Barcelona and Panathinaikos a game behind. Servena's victory means every Group E team has won at least one game. Another week, another victory for still unbeaten Seska Moscow in an all-Russian overtime thriller against Nizhny Novgorod. But Olympiakos lost its unbeaten top 16 record at Anadolu Efes, while Fenerbahce won away again and Laboral Kucha was too strong for EA7 Milan. One of the best games of the season took place in Moscow, where Nizhny Novgorod matched Seska all the way and eventually forced overtime through late free throws from the outstanding Taylor Rochesty. Andrei Voroncevic and Trey Tompkins had shone in regulation, but Minos Teodosic took over in the extra period, racing to a game-high 25 points to give Seska its 15th consecutive victory this season. There was an emotional evening in Istanbul, where legendary Anadolu FS coach Dusan Ivkovic welcomed the team he twice led to EuroLeague Championships, Olympiakos Pireos. But once the action started, there was no sympathy, with FS producing a solid defensive effort to repel the Reds and eventually cruise to a 14-point victory. Another Istanbul team also enjoyed success as Fenerbahce claimed its sixth consecutive road win, defeating Unica Malaga as Andrew Gaudelok scored 10 points in the third quarter and Jan Vesely dominated the fourth. Two teams going in search of their second top 16 victory went head-to-head -head in Vitoria, and host Laboral claimed the win against EA7 Milan after an electrifying start from Davis Bertans, who scored 16 points in the first five minutes. Defeat for Olympiakos gives Seska sole control of top spot in Group F, with Istanbul pair FS and Fenerbahce tied for a share of third place. Nizhny and Laboral are only a game away from the top four, while Malaga is the only winless team in the top 16. Singer is McLean, probably, probably because he's singing all the time under the shower after practice, before practice. This season I don't know yet. Stefan Jovic, he come now, he come now, and I, I didn't, I, uh, I didn't see how to play guitar, but uh, he sing good. He's great singer, and if he finished basketball career, he can be a singer. Singer. We don't really have anyone that tries to sing. I think the best singer is Danis Klitschkli because he's uh, very talented for music, you know, and he knows how to play some instruments, so I think that's him. I guess we have no good singer in the team. The best singer? Uh, I think Pedway. He's the best singer because he tries also some Greek songs, so I understand his effort about that. I cannot say I never go with the guys in karaoke, but uh, Jackson tried to sing something, but no. Bye, have a great no, time. Okay, I must me. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I can sing well, don't get me wrong. I'm, I, I, I can sing really good, but I just don't like to do it in public. <laughs> I'm gonna go myself as the best singer on that one. I can't, uh, ah, ah, ah. devotion. I can't think of anybody else who sings on a day to day. Sean actually sings a little bit. Sean James, yeah. Sammy, because he's, he's the loudest one, he's singing always in the showers after the practice. 
DMT is the best singer. He's always singing Greek music, you know. When the locker room, even if the even if the radio's not on, he's always singing something. Uh, but he doesn't sound bad. Hmm. Tough question. I think they don't have so very good singer in the team. More or less, everybody you are down the low percent. Best singer, oof. Costas. Costas is a big singer. Why? I don't know. But I, I hear him sing in the shower. I think he, he can he can go to the X Factor. I feel devotion. Best dancers are J.D. Osman and Emilian Koshin. Joe Raglan, for sure. He knows he knows all the new dances. That's me for sure. Why? I don't know. Because my, my wife is a professional dancer, so. They came at mid-season from all over the continent. Four EuroLeague stars invited to a pool party for roles much different than the ones they play on a basketball court. Two-time EuroLeague champ Carl Heinz was a barbecue chef. Reigning MVP Sergio Rodriguez played a passerby. Sean James and Robin Benzin acted the parts of poolside loungers. When their work was done, they became stars off the court too, when the Turkish Airlines EuroLeague pool dunk video immediately went viral worldwide. When I got to see it on uh, on YouTube for the you know for the first time, it was amazing. You know, and everybody's reaction, um, not only in Europe but all over the world, was amazing too. Making the pool dunk video happen in a single day at the height of their season required a lot of goodwill on the part of the players turned actors. And if they expected good winter weather on the outdoor set in Madrid, Spain, what they experienced was a different kind of chilling by the pool. People don't understand how cold that day really was. It was like cold, really cold. And, you know, just to be there with Sergio, Robin and Kyle, you know, we made the best of it, and we had fun doing it. It was really, really special. The only thing that bothered a little bit, it was a little bit cold in Madrid. It was a little bit cold, and the guy that was, uh, was, was on, the, on the jet was uh, very, very freezing. Once they got to work, the players all realised that executing this particular pool dunk was at least as hard as making a perfect alley-oop against great defence in front of 10,000 fans. There was a lot of takes because if I fumbled the ball or Sergio or anyone messed up, you had to do it again. And it's a lot of time we got a guy trying to throw a lob pass from this jet to a guy sprinting into the pool. So that had to be on point and precise every single time. And one little misstep and we had to do everything over. Even when everything seemed to go right, they learned that more takes were necessary in order to capture the one that was absolutely perfect. We probably shot the scene maybe 30 or 40 times. Uh, so it was fun for the fact that, you know, we think we completed it maybe six or seven, um, got the whole run through. So I think, you know, every time we completed it, I mean, it was kind of exciting to see everybody's face and everybody's reaction like once we completed. And if at first they didn't succeed, they had plenty of laughs while trying. It was a lot of fun, like because we had so much, uh, so much options and so much opportunities to do. Like there were passings, they were jumping in the pool, dunkings, and uh, like it was a big show. The end product, a 12-pass alley-oop extravaganza, made all the effort worthwhile. Just as it inspired a spontaneous splash party among the actors, the Turkish Airlines Euroleague pool dunk thrilled everyone who saw it. Always to be chosen for something is, is good, and especially for this type of commercial. Uh, uh, I've never seen nothing, nothing like that before, so I was really surprised when I get there, but it uh, was a great, a great experience. I thought it was cool. I thought it was one of those things where, um, you know, I don't know who put it together, just just how everything went in sync and how everything was planned and, and orchestrated, it was, 
It was brilliant, and I really enjoyed watching it. Oh, my phone was blowing up. You know, I got text messages from everybody, from you know, from my friends to my little cousins, my, my grandmother even seen it, which was, <laughs> which was kind of crazy. I mean, it it was on every media outlet. I think it was on you know, from ESPN to Sports Illustrated to Good Good Morning America. I mean, it was everywhere, all over the world. So I mean, it was it was surprising, but you know, it was definitely walkable. He has dominated in the top 16 before and FC Barcelona centre Ante Tomic did so again in round five with a near perfect performance that has earned him the B-Win MVP of the week distinction. Tomic led his team in six different statistical categories during Barcelona's tip-off two buzzer 89-72 victory over visiting Jelgiris Kaunas in Group E on Friday. In almost 25 mostly flawless minutes, he scored 16 points by making six of seven two-point shots and all four of his free throws. Tomic also added nine rebounds, five assists and two blocks while drawing five fouls, adding to a performance index rating of 34 that was the best on a winning team this week. Let's check out the top five plays of the round. Number five, Victoria, Spain. Laboral Kucha Victoria have the ball and Kim Tilly has no doubt in his mind. He is flying high to the rim to explode. A brutal slam, Kim Tilly. Number four, Athens, Greece. Panathinaikos launch a fast break. Vladimir Jankovic with the pass. Behind his back for Anthonis Fotsis to score. Lightning play from Panathinaikos. A cool pass from Vladimir Jankovic. Number three, Moscow, Russia. The athletic Terence Kinsey makes a great steal and races to the basket, but Andre Voroncevic is racing back with him. Never say die hustle from Voroncevic to make the block. Number two, Tel Aviv, Israel. Jeremy Pargo is going to go coast to coast for Maccabi Electra and finish it in style. An athletic leap for a sensational hang time dunk from Jeremy Pargo. Watch him fly. And the number one play of the week from Barcelona, Spain. Marcelino Huertas gets the rebound, makes a spin, picks out the pass. Mario Hezonia, one-handed alley-oop slam. Brilliant play from Marcelino to Hezonia. A classic among world basketball derbies takes centre stage for an extra special top 16 round six game of the week, even as two familiar adversaries battle for first place in another group. More than 200 meetings over seven plus decades says it all about the history between Real Madrid and FC Barcelona. Their game of the week is their first EuroLeague showdown since Madrid last spring followed reigning MVP Sergio Rodriguez to the biggest semi-final victory in Final Four history, which Barcelona and superstar centre Ante Tomic, himself a former Madrid player, will seek to avenge on Thursday. In the same Group E, playoff position is the objective as Alba Berlin hosts Panathinaikos Athens in what promises to be a power battle between two inside forces, Jamel McLean for the hosts and Esteban Batista for the Greens. And the defending EuroLeague champs hit the road to meet their one-time leader Carlos Arroyo and his Galatasaray Live Hospital Istanbul team in what will be a great point guard matchup between him and Maccabi Electra Tel Aviv's current floor general Jeremy Pargo. Also in Group E, a desperately needed win will go to either Servena Zvezda Telecom or Jalgiris Kaunas when they face off in Belgrade. 
in a Group F battle royale. First place is up for grabs between two superpowers as Olympiakos Pirel squares off against visiting Seska Moscow for the first time since their 2013 semi-final, which the Reds ruled en route to a repeat title. Now, as then, expect a stellar duel between a pair of magic guards and former teammates. Vasilis Panoulis for Olympiakos and Milos Teodosic for Seska in a fascinating subplot to a showdown with plenty of potential game breakers. Another Group F showdown that may shape the playoffs race as host EA7 Emporio Armani Milan and defensive leader David Moss aiming to recreate their top 16 surge from a year ago to the detriment of visiting Anadolu FS Istanbul and a sharpshooter who knows his opponent well, Matt Janning. The Group F is completed by two more pivotal battles. Unikaha Malaga hosting Nizhny Novgorod and Fenerbahce Ulker Istanbul against Laboral Kucha Vitoria. See you next week.